Hello friends, welcome to another vlog. I am not really sure what I wanted to work on this week, so I think I'm gonna work on trim. I'm gonna maybe make the trim for this situation. Hi, I can point at things. <laughs> uh, I also probably need to make a lot of piping before I can make my bodice, but I need to work out what that piping is gonna look like. So I thought I would do that this week. I did take a few days of just laying around because I did not feel like sewing. Okay, what else? I had some other stuff from the last vlog. Oh, yeah, so, um, sorry guys, I really should have been more clear. Everybody's sending me the exact same link. The archive.com link and the Hathi Trust link, and I think there's one other one, like U Pen or something link. They all go to the same place. Um, I should have been clear. I have done a simple Google search, guys. <laughs> so, of course I found those. Um, uh, I'm talking about the delineator articles right now for anyone who doesn't know and I forgot to say yes of course I have I've done a simple Google search so I have in fact found those um, I was actually wondering why they didn't have all of them digitized like why Butterick doesn't and why we're relying on random people to do that <laughs> and they really only have a few from the 1880s and I'm looking for 1870s and 1880s and 1870s is almost impossible to find like you just can't find them you can find them in, in magazine format what I was actually asking about is if anybody knows where to get a bunch of them, like, in actuality. Not the digital versions, although the digital versions are great if, if they had them all. I, I, a lot of people were like, hey, you should email Butterick. I, I will, I'm going to. I'm, I want, I want them all done, and I don't know how or why they wouldn't have done that before, but I don't know. The eight, so the delineator started in the 1873, I think. So there's, it's almost impossible to find all the, the ones between 1873 and maybe like 1882. You can find originals. Like I have one of the magazines that I physically have is one of those, but they're, they're not online. So, or a simple Google search doesn't find you them. But thank you to everyone who sent me that link. I, I'm sorry I wasted your time. <laughs> That was, that was dumb, of course I should have said that and I didn't. Okay, so trim. Uh, lots of people have been sending me their ideas for trim. I, I already have an idea that I think I'm gonna go with, which is to do the stripes that are on the train and all of the trim I'm gonna have is gonna be me made. So, fun times ahead. I'm not gonna do this skirt, I'm gonna do the overskirt right now. There's probably gonna be a lot of trim videos as a matter of fact, while I figure this out. Um, so I need to figure out maybe railroad tracks. You might be able to see from my board right there <laughs> I'm drawing railroad tracks to figure out how I'm gonna put this together I can't figure out if I'm gonna build it completely off of the tails and then apply it like applicate it to the tails or Applicate as I go to the tails. I'm trying to figure that out. So Victorian trims are surprisingly fiddly and surprisingly narrow. I was looking at this guy to figure out like how wide do I want it and like two inches actually seems like a lot. I think they would have done it all within an inch. So a quarter inch yellow stripe, a half an inch black stripe, and then another quarter inch yellow stripe. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to make that happen today. And on top of all that, I don't actually have very much of the yellow, so I don't want to figure out how to do it with my actual fabric. I want to figure out how to do it with some sort of sample fabric so that I can just make sure it works before I go making a ton of trim for this thing. It doesn't need like a massive amount but I also don't know if I'm gonna do a decorative pattern or not so I gotta figure that out. Okay so looking at my skirt I'm gonna put a picture right here of the me screenshotting with my camera phone the Hogwarts Express and the stripe that goes down it which led me to creating this which as you can see is very uneven <laughs> and kind of a nightmare to put together. But I do love the way this looks. This is, by the way, the wrong yellow. That is the correct yellow. Um, I'm just making samples with scraps right now so I can see how to do this order of operations. So I checked in with Peggy and I was like, yo, I love this, it's a nightmare. I need to get these more even, blah, blah, blah. She's like, quilter pro tip and we have created this which is significantly more even than this you see how like thin this is compared to this side these are much better and if it's a little wobbly that's okay no one will notice it on a skirt also these yellow pieces are actually bias which is making everything more wobbly so it should be better like I will make a sample of the actual two <laughs> with the actual stuff before I get going with this but so what she told me to do was take an inch wide yellow strip which this is an inch and a half and fold it in half 
and then sew that to the black at a quarter of an inch and do that on both sides and then flip it out and I did that and it made it much more even and much more stable and also then I don't have to worry about the reason that this one is uneven is because I had to like delicately fold over after the fact this quarter of an inch that's a nightmare so if you just fold it in half and you're sewing it out a quarter of an inch you can get a relatively even stitch although you can see how drunk so I am although some of this I blame on again it being bias <laughs> So I think I'm gonna go with this method. It is much faster and easier. I need, if I don't do any wacky corner things, I need 101 inches. I might do a wacky corner thing. So this has this wacky corner thing. I also don't know if I'm gonna do two strips or one. I think I'm gonna just do one. I am vaguely considering doing something like this in the corner, but I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if that's necessary. I don't even know how to do that. I have to figure out how to miter corners. My friend Hannah sent me a tutorial on that, so I need to miter one of these and see if it looks good when I miter it. If it doesn't look good, I won't do it. I mean, I have to miter a corner no matter what, right? Because I have to turn a corner. But do I need to do that much mitering of corners? No, I do not. So let's see what it looks like. And we have one mitered corner, so there's that. Great. Thank you to Hannah, who also knows this because she does quilting. So now I need to figure out if I actually want to do some sort of juju in the corner. Or not and then how much extra I need to make in order to make that happen all right so here I've drawn out a grid to help me figure out when I need to turn and these are one inch given that this is gonna be one inch wide sort of situation so it tells me that like six inches up needs to be this this is six inches right here needs to be the turn and then I need to go over you know four inches total and then go down six inches and etc cetera, etc cetera. So that I, I, so I've made a map so I can figure out how many inches I need to stop from the bottom of the hem So when I'm doing this. The other thing I thought about was that when I put this together, I should make sure that the seams that are in here, because it's going to be obviously not one piece of fabric that's going to make this up, I'm going to have to seam it. But if I put the seams in different spots for the yellow, the black, and the black, then like a little seam here and a little seam here and a seam here for the black like wouldn't be as bad as one big solid line so I think I'm gonna make sure that that happens so they're not exactly equal all right now here's my math I originally needed 102 inches to go down across and up and that was just a straight measurement I did with a measuring tape this space that I'm taking out which would have just been a straight turn equals 9 inches so times 2 is 18 inches so I'm left with 84 inches that I need. Then I counted every square that I need to add in and double that. So that was um, 21. So that's how we got 42 in here. And then for every single turn, I added an inch. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 turns. So 14 inches to absorb some of that space. I probably will have a little bit extra, but that's okay. But that's how I came to I need 140 inches. Hopefully that math makes sense to everybody else. And for those of you guys who love to see him, Keanu, ladies and gentlemen. Keanu, what's going on? You want to come in? You want to say hi to everyone? You want to say bonks? Bonks. Do your patrol. This is Keanu, he's doing his patrol. Oh, this is my giant Fortnum and Mason basket that I got. I don't know if I told you guys about that. The members of CauseTube and like my, my buddy squad sent me the world's biggest Fortnum and Mason hamper. Like, it is massive. I can't even tell you, like, that's my giant trash can next to it. <laughs> it's so big, like, and it was full. It was full of yummy food and tea and a teapot and all kinds of stuff. It was crazy. I, I don't even know what to say. I just love this thing so much. And I've always wanted to get a hamper from Fortnum and Mason and I never thought it was gonna be this hamper. <laughs> like. This looks small in here, but it is ridiculously big. So I'm super high at pipe on it. I don't, everyone's like, that could be one hell of a cabbage patch, but I don't really want it to be that because I don't want to have that much cabbage. But I could probably store more fabric in it. <laughs> anyway, I love it. I don't know if this is its permanent home, but this is where it is right now. Alrighty, I guess I'm just gonna go cut into that fabric because, hey, oh, camera's still in here. I forgot. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go cut into the fabric and start making this happen. Oh, oh, here he is. Hi, baby. This one is the funniest. He goes into the 
storage space. <laughs> and he sits in there. What a funny kitty. Babies, get done. Hi, can you? He's like, what, mom? I'm not going to get better at this, so I might as well just do the thing. So I'm going to go do the thing. Actually, cal calculating this all out, I think I have actually plenty of fabric. So I'm glad I got the three yards I did. I just think bias tape for piping is going to take like way more than it is. But actually, like, a bodice isn't really that big. So I think it'll be fine. Okay, I need everybody to take a deep breath in because you're about to gasp. I don't like rotary cutters. <gasps> See, I had to take the deep breath in so you couldn't actually gasp that much. <laughs> anyway, um, I hate rotary cutters. I can't manage to make them work. <laughs> I suck at it. And the one that I have is brand new and it doesn't seem to actually slice like all the way through in a consistent manner, which makes me kind of hate it even more. But I'm going to try on this at least once. So I'm taking some scrap silk right now. I'm practicing cutting with a ruler. It, the rotary cutter like pushes the ruler is the problem and I understand that that's a me thing and that's okay. Sometimes you don't like things because you aren't good at it <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> that's actually totally fine but for the sake of like making this slightly easier I'm gonna see if I can get me and my rotary cutter to like get along for five minutes so that I can make this easier. So <sighs> leveling up is hard peeps. Okay this is what I mean. This should come apart, but see how I have to like pull it? I shouldn't have to do this. It should actually be sliced. It's not. <laughs> and that's because I was being gentle so that I didn't push the ruler. If I push down harder on this, I somehow push the ruler over every single time. So I'm going to sit here and slice pieces of black fabric until I feel comfortable with this or until I give up. But that's what's happening now. Okay, so I got to the point where I was doing this. It's actually really difficult for me also to line it up to move the ruler down. And when it doesn't grab, it does this. Um, or when it doesn't cut through. And when it doesn't cut through, it does this. And I don't want weird... I don't know if you guys can see that stripe that happens because it pulled some, some threads out of the, the weft threads. I don't know. I, I think I'm just going to mark it and cut it with scissors. <laughs> I think, honestly, it will be less of a headache right now. Sigh. Okay, so this thing you're seeing is the fabric cut at one inch and then folded in half and ironed. And I need to make six of these and five of the black ones and then sew them all together and we will have trim. Huzzah! Um, my goal really is just to get these ones cut tonight if I can and then anything past that I get will be great. So I got those cut and that was actually super fast. I can feel every single one of your eyes and I can hear you screaming about <laughs> the rotary cutter and how that would have been so much easier. Actually, for me, it's not. The rotary cutter causes so much stress for me and I just like, I've tried like my whole life to get a handle on them. It's not my jam. So this is for all of you out there <laughs> who watch stuff and they want to do it some other way because it's actually harder for them to do it the way that everybody else does it. Do it your way. Just get it done. Whatever you need to do to get it done is the way you should do it. Like, hands down, that's my advice. So, if you have something and I'm like, make the French seam, and you're like, Noelle, I can't make the French seam. Don't make the French seam. It's fine. Like, whatever. As long as you get it done, it's all good. So, that's my message. This really took me like, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, nothing. It took me no time at all. So, 
yeah. Okay, so for those of you who don't work with silk often or are new to this gig, fun times. This is what I'm always complaining about, about silk fraying, and this is why I zigzag everything I work with with silk, because this has only been cut and then sewn together, and it already looks like this hot mess. So that's why, and these, this one hasn't even been sewn on yet, but my, like, my table here, you can barely see it, but it's, like, it covered my floor. It's everywhere. So this is why I zigzag, especially with silk, because it likes to fray immediately. So now that I've sewn on this side, I'm actually going to go ahead and pink, pink, use pinking shears to pink this, and then I will sew on the other side and pink those. Okay, here's a somewhat better explanation. <laughs> All strips are one inch wide, so there are two gold strips that were one inch wide and they're folded in half, so now they're half an inch. This black one is an inch wide. I sewed this gold one here, and I will sew the other gold one on this side, and then when I push them back, it will be gold, black, gold. And this will be a quarter inch, this will be a half an inch, and the other gold will be a quarter inch. So the total will be one inch wide. Okay, we have some trim to put onto the skirt. I'm also contemplating pleating at the bottom of the skirt, but I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to see what this looks like once it goes on. Hello! I have spent my entire day doing stuff that is not YouTube or sewing and getting things done on my list and it has been glorious considering that I've spent several days before that laying around in bed so I feel like I'm getting something done woo it has eaten up my day though so I feel like I have about an hour left tonight that I can do anything productive it is in fact the middle of the night of course um so what I thought I would do is come in here and lay in on that skirt this here trim that I made at least some of it, like pin it down and see what a nightmare trying to do this pattern is going to be. And if I can, pin it on and see how it looks. And if it looks horrible, then I will slowly back away from this idea. And if it looks awesome, then I will just sew it down. So I thought I would give it a go first though. Okay, I'm digging this. This is what it looks like so far. I do think what I'm going to do is, because this is all like vaguely curved, right? <laughs> so that's why you see like wrinkles here, even though this should be really flat. So what I think I'm going to do is sew this part down so that it's attached. And then I will do the long part and then I will come back and do another one of these on the other side. <sighs> 
because I think you don't want to pin everything and then have a like as you're pinning you're probably gonna be pulling out a little bit of extra right like if it's not perfectly flat so there'll be like this wave that moves through this thing with which would be annoying so I want to just get it down <laughs> so that's what I think I'm gonna do um, I don't know if I'm, I might start sewing now since I have a little bit of time I'm not exhausted yet so I might as well do a little sewing but yeah I'm definitely not gonna finish this today for sure okay so we have at least this part to here done so I guess tomorrow I will go try to get this middle part down and maybe start pinning the other one and go back up but it's coming along nicely so this is great today is just a stitching day so we might have chats in a minute um, but I did have the most like amazing mail day like just yes <laughs> so I went to my box my PO box which I haven't been to in like maybe three weeks Last time it'd been like, I don't know, a long time and there was like one note card in there and I was really like stoked to get my Hermione postcard. <laughs> that was really cute. I went through this time and there was a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to show you these. So if, if any of this came from one of you, this one came from Germany. Um, thank you very much. This one was folded up in like a little kimono looking thing which was super cute. This one came from Empress of Buttons. She's so cute. Anyway, if, if this was any of you... Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And that was really awesome. It made my day and I smile and I do keep all of these. I have like a giant apothecary jar that I put them all in. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I also had another awesome surprise, which wasn't really a surprise. You told me it was coming, but I didn't actually know she had sent it. So hang on. Okay. My next present came from V who is Snappy Dragon and she has a YouTube channel. So I will link her down below for you guys. She is a cause tuber as well, and she sent me thank you for co-COVID presents, which were chocolate chips cookies, um, and I think these are, she said these are ginger snaps and yum. And then these teas, which are raspberry black tea. Oh my god, that looks so good. Ginger chai and mandarin chai, and they are in the cutest little jars. I am a mad sucker for cute little jars. Whoo! This... My friend, the delineator, here on the tubes, recommended to me when we had our little chat the other day. Um, it's all about parasols and umbrellas. So, I am hype to read this book. He said it was going to be balls. He has this book. So, square, square. I can use the word square. <laughs> I just got one of those square ones and I'm super excited about it. It's really cute, but oh, those are so good. Like his collection was just amazing. Mm, yeah, that one. It sucks that these are all black and white, but like, honestly, we'll take black and white over nothing. Oh, oh, look, a color photo. As soon as I say that, always. Anyway, I am excited to read this book. I also got this book for two dollars on eBay. I'm like, oh, I actually feel bad. Like, I think the guy charged me like two dollars shipping, so I paid four dollars total. And I actually feel like he probably lost money on this. <laughs> I didn't actually look at the postage, but I should have. I am here really just for the 1770 through 1780 portion of this, but there is um, fashion plates from Civil War era, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If for people who are interested and hype on that, you can find this book on eBay for super cheap sometimes. Yes, I do have a permanent search going for fashion plates and fashion plate book so that I can find books like this on eBay. That is where these all come from. There is a really good section here on the 1870s, so I'm pretty hype on this. Going back to Civil War... Civil War is not really my jam. I don't like those sleeves. I also don't like um, hoop skirts. I'll take a bustle, but I need it all in the back. I don't like banging into people on the side. Although, people have argued that COVID is like a really great reason to wear hoop skirts now. Or 1830s even, because the sleeves keep everyone so far away from you that <laughs> you have a six foot distance. Anyway, that's this book. Two bucks. 
two bucks, two bucks, two bucks. Cool beans. And then I got one more thing. Okay, I can see a new problem coming to head. So this was like $21 and it is 10 of Arthur's magazines. I kind of like this because my dad's name is Arthur. Um, honestly, I'm here for the first like four or five pages because those include all the clothing items and the rest of it is magazine from then, which means it there's like a story that in here. They talk about religious stuff. They talk about housekeeping. They talk about clothes, but it's like described, not shown. So the illustrated part of this magazine is literally just the beginning. So, but these things are awesome to read through. Like this section is called the storyteller. So I think it's serialized stories because I've seen in here the same story carried throughout a few of the magazines. So, history, biography, and general literature. I think this is part of the way that people got educated, is they had stuff that was in magazines like this. Because how else would you get information back then? They didn't have the internet, and libraries, I mean, I'm sure libraries were a thing, but uh, yes, please. 1870s? Yeah, 1875. <laughs> Um, here's 1884. These are in like very delicate condition. So I will be hard pressed to flip through these with one hand, but there's some looks at what's going on. Anyway, I'm going to look at them when I have two hands, but I got these and I was really hyped about them. I'm going to go put these somewhere with my cats when I get to them. Um, because I can see that being a problem and yeah, they're all like falling apart at the seams and stuff, but honestly this magazine is like a hundred and what 45 years old. Yeah Yeah, it's gonna be falling apart. So I'm I'm honest like our magazines would not last 145 years They built this thing tough. I also love the art on here I, There's advertisements in the back and I also love looking at the advertisements because the advertisements are in like every font possible <laughs> like they just they don't care they're just like yeah let's do all the fonts <laughs> and i think that's just amazing Alrighty, so i'm gonna sew and chat so i'm gonna look down while i talk to you guys if you don't want to watch chats i'll leave the time signature here that you can just skip right on forward to I am gonna show you how to miter those corners <laughs> that I mitered because people seem to be tripping out about it and I'm like really because it's just two folds <laughs> it's not really actually that big of a deal my friend Hannah showed me how to do it and I really just want to put her demo to me up on the internet so everyone can just see what she showed me but she was doing it one-handed because she was also filming um, I think she sent it to me on like whatsapp or something so uh, she's like, yeah, why don't you refill that? So I'm gonna do that. So and show you how to miter corners. It's literally just two folds, which is super easy. Um, that's a, I guess a quilting technique because you miter the corners on binding. Why is this hard? Okay, cool. <laughs> I just need to get one stitch going and I don't know why that's hard. How is everyone doing? How's everyone holding up? I went to the dentist today and that was a weird experience because I haven't been to a medical professional or any kind of like, oh, there's a lot of people here kind of place since this all went down. So that was an interesting experience. I was asking about their health and safety with regard to COVID and they're like, oh, actually we've been protecting you from like AIDS and hepatitis and a bunch of other stuff this whole time. So it's not really that different. The one thing that they do have is if they're drilling, oh, I have a big knot. I just started and then I have a knot. Um, if they're drilling, they have this machine they put next to your face and it like sucks all the air out so like if they're drilling everything that's coming out of your mouth goes like in this hole essentially which i was just like wow that's amazing and gets filtered out they also have like hepa filtration you know in in the building and whatever so i don't know i guess i didn't feel very unsafe there all right come on now why you gotta be like this not oh there's like one tiny knot in there and it is annoying I can get this out. I can do it. I can. I will. 
it's gonna happen. That's my determination song. Did you like it? What can I do? The end is right here. The end is not. Actually, I don't know where the end is anymore. Oh, there we go. Okay, it did come out. Sweet. Excellent. Anyway, dentist happened, which was cool. I needed to go to the dentist. I go to the dentist every four months um, because I get cavities if I actually wait the six months. Well, at least historically that's the case. I don't know. I don't have any more teeth that don't have fillings in them at this point. <laughs> that's not true. The 12, I literally asked today, the 12 front teeth, so the top six and the the Front, bottom six in the front don't have dental work in them and every other tooth has fillings in it or crowns or whatever because my teeth are not as solidly built as I would like. I've been going to the same dentist for like 20 years too which is kind of crazy. We occasionally like trip out about that. Like he was like didn't you start coming here when you were like 20? I'm like yeah actually <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I keep going to him because he lets me be a giant baby which is what I am. <laughs> And I can say things like, please don't show me the needle. I don't want to know. I saw that needle once. You don't want to see that, guys. It, the, like, giving you pain medicine at the dentist numbing agent. Mm -mm. That needle's no good. Don't like it. Don't want to see it ever again. So I'm like, can we, can you do the thing? And he goes, Bleh, with my cheek, like you do to, like, little children. Mm-hmm. He does that for me. He's a great guy. I really like him. If anybody needs a dentist in San Jose, hit me up. I am very much looking forward to fall coming because even though it means fall, California's on fire for the next three months, um, it means cooler weather, which would be nice. I don't have to deal with it too much because I basically don't go outside. Although I'm threatening to. The Sacramento Antique Fair is back on, so Abby and I are threatening once again to have a socially distanced buddy meet up and go to the Sacramento Antique Fair, which would be fun just for like, you know, a couple hours. It's outdoors, which is nice because it's, you know, that's a controllable environment. And we can wear masks and gloves. Apparently white cotton gloves are actually more effective when touching multiple things than rubber gloves are. And she has those, so she said she would loan me a pair or give me a pair and I can just wash them. So that sounds like fun. So we might do that. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to go in September or October or what, but fun times. Oh, something I announced on Instagram stories but not here yet is that I actually stopped being an admin for the cause tube guide as of last week. I did. Like, they're on hiatus right now. And I, I worked through the hiatus on that. But then I signed off as an admin. There's no drama. <laughs> I'm sure everybody wants there to be drama, but there's no drama. I was just like, you know, I got a lot of things going and I'm like tired and it's really a lot of work. So um, actually a lot of us that were OG admins decided to duck out. So um, a new set of people are going to show up and take care of that, which is great. And it's good. It's like, it's a lot of work. And so I would expect people to rotate in and out of that job fairly often. I think I only did it for like, I want to say four or five months and I'm like exhausted from it. I don't know how I'm exhausted from it. It's only like an hour or two of work per day, per day you have, right? And I had two days, but the decision making on setting everything up and getting all the rules settled and like making all the documents that were necessary and stuff. So now it's a lot, actually, actually it's funny because I, we did all the, like I didn't do all the hard work. Nikki did most of it. Um, but like I helped make all the decisions and stuff. So, um, yeah, we set it all up. So it should be like a lot easier to like run at this point, but we need a break. Sometimes you just need a break. And it's a free service and it's all volunteer work, so. Anyway, no drama. Oh, in regard to the fall thing, I am also looking forward to fall scented candles. I don't love Bath & Body Works candles. Like, I want to love Bath & Body Works candles, but I don't. They are really, like, sweet smelling. I hear the buzz. That was probably my phone. They're really sweet smelling to me and, like, ugh, it's overwhelming sometimes and I'm not that into it. But man, am I a sucker for their fall candles. I love leaves like nobody's business. There's a candle called leaves. There's another one called fall that's really good too. Um, and 
like honey crisp apple oh it's so good it's probably already sold out <laughs> I went to Joanne to look for a pattern holder because I, I bought more patterns from Shirley Victorian and now I don't have any space for those. So I went to, to look for a box and they didn't have anything. So I just like ran in and ran out. But I went there and they had Thanksgiving stuff out and Christmas stuff out. They didn't even have Halloween stuff anymore. I'm like, it is still August. What are you doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah. I am confused and baffled by this this trend of like making everything earlier and earlier and like I, I get that people want to roll towards the holidays but like in in COVID year maybe you want to let us just enjoy them as they come you know so I don't know I, I was baffled by this this turn of events that happened but yeah so I'm gonna go maybe go on the Bath and Body Works website and see if they have the candles that I like I as you can imagine have a hoard of candles like I have too many I have got a stupid amount of candles um, in my bedroom they're all in a big shelf in my bedroom it's 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 a lot <laughs> it, it's not necessary is really what it is but I'm always scared that I'm gonna run out and then it'll be like February and I won't be able to get my favorite candle for like six more months so I do Make sure I have a stockpile. In the winter time, I am 100% a candle person. When you have seven cats, you start liking fragrant candles. <laughs> My house surprisingly does not smell like cat most of the time. Their boxes are either in locations that are like that little hidey hole thing that I was showing you. We have one of those in the bathroom downstairs, which keeps the, the smell like contained basically. Or they're in the sunroom because we have a giant sunroom which helps and then we can open up every window in the sunroom and the sliding glass door that's in there and the main sliding glass door in the house like our house can get aired out pretty fast and we air it very regularly however because the fires are happening currently we don't air the house as often as I would generally prefer um, I don't know where you guys live but California can have as much as like a 50 degree difference between what the temperature is during the day and what it is at night like it could easily be 100 degrees during the day and 50 at night. <laughs> no problem during the summer. So you open up the windows at night and let all the cool air in and then right, you know, if you wake up early enough or hey, you go to bed at five, you can just shut all the windows right before you go to bed and lock a bunch of that cool air in and that helps keep the house cooler during the day. So we air the house out all the time, but we can't do that when there's um, fires going, which sucks. What else to tell you guys about? Oh, this is very cool. So I had like a marker from my husband, an IOU, if you will. So he, I don't want a husband shame on the internet, but there was an incident in which our 10 year anniversary was sort of, let's just say dismissed. <laughs> I'm not a girl who enjoys that. Like I am very much in the camp of, we don't have to make a big deal out of our anniversary, but our 10 year anniversary, really like even all through the years he'd be like is it okay if we don't do anything huge i'm like yeah just like you know the big ones like the 10 year the 15 the 20 those ones are good we should we should do something nice on those that didn't happen so our 11 year anniversary rolls around and he's trying to do something crazy like he wants to go to like bora bora or something and i'm just like okay we could say bora bora for the 15 year anniversary we don't need to blow like eight thousand dollars going on a vacation right now for our 11 year anniversary <laughs> okay like it, it's gonna be fine i'm not that mad <laughs> but something nice would be cool so um he did plan a weekend away and then we were also gonna go apparently unbeknownst to me to the jewelry store of choice amongst my social circle that is my friend group here that is not a costuming friend group and then covid happened so we couldn't do that the jewelry store was closed. I think you can go now by appointment if you want to. But like, honestly, I don't really need more jewelry. Like, I have a lot of jewelry that I don't wear. So, so I traded my marker in um, for custom-made shoes by my friend Vicky. I'm going to say this wrong, but I'm going to try. Dean Checo. Dean Checo. It looks like... Denecchio, but 
but it's actually Dean Checo. Like if you look on her website, she spells it phonetically. Anyway, um, she makes custom shoes. She does have a YouTube channel and I will link her down below so you can check her out and she, she has YouTube videos on how she makes custom shoes. Like she is a shoemaker by trade. So I am gonna get some shoes made to fit my feet, exactly. And I am super pumped about that. And yes, I did trade diamonds for that. <laughs> And yes, I do think that I got the better end of the deal. We are currently discussing, so you can get shoes that are made from last that she has. So those are like shoe forms, like you have, the last is the thing that you form the shoe around. So you can get that, which is called like made to order. And she still makes them completely custom to your foot and stuff. They're just designs she already has, like she's made them before and she has a last for them. If she has to cut, an entirely new last for you then so because it's a completely different shoe than she's ever made before and like the shape of the bottom of the shoe is different or whatever then that's um called a bespoke shoe so both of them both form formats are custom to your foot foot so they're exactly your size um and you can have little custom details on them and stuff but generally the made to order ones are like kind of designed like the shoe the shoe shape is sort of designed so my husband actually told me I can do either. And so I thought for sure, cause you know, it's not cheap. It's not cheap peeps. <laughs> it's not cheap, but so worth it in my book. So I was trying to figure out which of her designs I wanted. She has a pair of Oxfords that are really beautiful and they're like sort of androgynous Oxfords, which I thought would be kind of cool. She has a pair of Mary Janes that I really love. I'm just mostly also trying to figure out if I'm a Mary Janes kind of girl. Like, do I look like a Mary Janes kind of girl? I don't know. I love those shoes. Like, I'm <laughs> madly in love with them. But just because you love something doesn't mean that that's your, your jam, right? So I am currently looking at other shoes. I kind of wanted to do the ready-made ones, even though, like, that sounds crazy. Like, of course, why wouldn't you want to design your own shoe, Noah? Because when you have all the choices in the world, it's really hard to make a decision. If you have to pick between six shoes or eight shoes or whatever she already has that like and then customize them, that's a lot easier because you have like something to go off of. But when you have all the choices in the world, that's actually like way more difficult than you think. Also, I am of the opinion, as is Kathy, as is Bernadette, and I always have been since they arrived on the scene, that the Londoners are the world's perfect shoe. So I came to the conclusion that if I get the bespoke shoe, I might have her make me, not exactly Londoners, but I might may have her make me that kind of shoe, like that style of, of Oxford with broguing and whatever, but basically make me a custom Londoner. I do own three, three pairs of Londoners. So it's stupid to get a pair of shoes made that is ex like, it's not identical, of course not but it's a custom version of the exact shoe you already own. I think that's like, can't believe like, my husband was like, yeah, just do it. If you clearly like that style, just get them made. I'm like, uh, okay. So if I get that, I don't know. I'm, I'm debating between the Mary Janes, which I, again, love. And I mean, I could be a Mary Jane person. I, I could just make myself into one. You can be whatever you want to be, people. So. Don't let your past limitations limit you on what you could be in the future. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I, I need to talk to Vicky. I talked to her today for a long time, so I need to talk to her again tomorrow. But it's a lot of money <laughs> to pay for shoes that you basically already own too. So that's another thing. But I went out on the internet and I looked up antique shoes and I looked up, you know, like all the different Victorian shoes and Edwardian shoes and all the kinds of things that I would look for in a shoe and all the ones that I screen grabbed are basically just Londoners. They're just different kinds of Londoners. They have different leathers and they have, I don't know, they just, they're basically the same. So I guess that's, that's what I'm going to do if I get bespoke ones. So I have to see, I kind, there's like, there's three styles that I really like of the, the ready made ones though too. I'm just trying to think of what I will get like the most use out of because I do want them to be something I want to wear regularly. Honestly, I wear my Skechers regularly. <laughs> Let's be square. But when I go out on, on the town, I want to have a shoe that I'm like into and I want to wear a lot and feel good in and have them be the most comfortable shoe I've ever worn. She has this pair that are, I'll put them up here. 
they're her first pair that she made and like honestly they're like super worn in like they're super worn in but to me I look at those and I'm like those are the shoes I want because those are the shoes that look the most comfortable to me like you could wear those for the rest of your life and you'd be square we'll see what happens but this is an exciting adventure to get to go on that I didn't expect and I am so glad that my husband said it's okay he's like uh I think you're saving me money here actually <laughs> and I'm like oh yeah for sure like you know I definitely would have spent three three times as much money on some piece of jewelry I don't really need right and I'm I don't know I'm a practical girl at heart like I'm a realist I'm very practical I'd rather have a gift that's like I look at my friends getting diamonds and I'm like oh they're so pretty like I'd really like that and then like I think about it and I'm like you know I'd kind of rather have like jewelry that I will wear when I'm costuming or you know like rather than spend five thousand dollars on a diamond ten tennis bracelet I'd rather spend two hundred and fifty dollars on a lady to tell like necklace <laughs> that I'm gonna get use out of when I'm doing 18th century costuming anyway god this is slow going I'm just sitting here going and I'm taking real big bites like these these stitches are like a half an inch so I'm trying to figure out if I should put some pleating at the bottom of this so I'm I'm wondering if I should do tiny pleats on this overskirt and do three layers and do yellow black yellow again I think I have enough fabric for that <laughs> I'm like do I hmm. but I think I do because the other thing I need the yellow fabric for is piping and I do want to put the train tracks on the ties in the back so there's that oh what else oh the wheels concept I I don't know if that's gonna happen people keep sending me <laughs> um lace like wagon wheel lace and I'm like mm, I'm not really a lace person so that's probably not going to be a thing that happens but um, I appreciate the sentiment and people are suggesting rosettes. I don't know about rosettes, but maybe cockades. I still haven't design decided what, how, if I'm going to do that, let alone how I will do it. I have this cockade, which I really like. I made it in a class and it's really good. And it's so good that I can't actually figure out where the end is. Like I, I literally sat here looking at every single loop going, where's the end of this? I'm like, is there no end? Oh, there it is. It's tucked in. Haha, <laughs> I had to look at the front to find the end. Anyway, maybe these. I'm sure. I gotta figure out how I made this. I made it in a class, like I said, so there might be instructions somewhere. Maybe. But maybe not. Also, ugh, this guy is like super twisted up on me. Let it hang and untwist itself. So I'm still pondering the wheel concept and I'm not sure what I'm going to do is getting is really the gist of that. <laughs> this whole thing is just the creative process of me figuring it out as I go. So hopefully that's interesting to people. Like I said, I'm pondering putting some pleats on this skirt. Um, but I actually might not put them on this skirt. I might just put them on the bottom of the other skirt. Although that, like the, the main skirt, the underskirt. Although that skirt is black, so I don't really know. I guess I could do yellow, red, yellow. Hmm. I will ponder this some more and see what I think. I might put it on the overskirt. I haven't figured any of this out yet. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's the great thing about this is like, and about costuming. You can, you can just not know what you're doing. It's fine. You don't really need to know. My friend Peggy talks about this a lot. You don't actually have to know what you're doing ever. You can just figure it out as you go. No one's judging you. Honestly, and you know, even if people are judging you, you don't have to show them. Like, just don't post it. So <laughs> that's the great thing about this. It's for you. It is not for anyone else. Um, although it is, it is fun to show things off. Like I showed off that corner on my Instagram, which I'm just like, oh, it's just mitered, mitered. I mean, I'm, I'm into it, I think it looks good, but I'm not, I wasn't like, holy cow, but like, the response I got on that was pretty swift <laughs> and pretty vigorous, which I, I was like, wow, okay, great, awesome. I'm glad people are enjoying this. Anyway, I think that's like pretty much all the new news with me. My, my integration went pretty well. People seem to be down with it, so that was cool. I feel like 
all the things that I'm always sort of like, eh, I don't know if that's going to go over well, end up going over just fine. People are generally awesome here. Which, man, I know I tell you guys this a lot, but I really appreciate you guys. I think you're all awesome. Oh, I do have to own up to the fact that I did not respond to all my comments in the last video. And I am going to start not being able to respond. I think I came back after 24 hours and there was already like 400 comments and I was like, okay, cool. I do read every single one of them though. So I'm going to go, if you get a creator heart, that's just me saying, I read you, I got it. <laughs> but if I don't respond to you personally with every on every single comment you leave, I'm going to try to do it as much as I can because I still love doing it and I think it's really fun and I love hearing what you guys are up to and what you're reading and all that sort of stuff. So if you're here now, leave, leave me a comment about what it is you're reading, what you're up to, what you're, you're working on, what you're listening to, what you're watching on TV, all that stuff. I find all of it just so fascinating. But if I don't respond to you personally every single time, it's not you, it's me. I'm just overwhelmed and I'm trying to do a lot of things. Oh, I don't know if I've mentioned this here. I guess now's a good time. I am a mess of. So Gigi, who was on my co my costuming and inclusion panel during COVID, and I have started filming a for a new YouTube channel, and it will be called Costuming in Color, and it's going to feature costumers of color. I feel like I wanted to make a space for people who were sort of underrepresented maybe on YouTube. There are several YouTubers of color for sure in the costuming community, but it can always be more. So we're gonna, we're just interviewing people um, and getting, letting, letting you get to know them and stuff and then sending you over to their profiles to hang out with them if you'd like to. Anyway, I guess initially we're gonna do monthly episodes. It might get more often than that, but for right now it's not gonna be that often. So probably once a month we're gonna do a little feature video on a costumer of color and we'll meet and greet kind of situation with people so everyone can get friendly with one another and meet people and learn about them and all that kind of stuff. It's gonna be a new channel. It's called gonna be called Costuming Color. When it comes out I will definitely like let you know that that's happening. It is one of the reasons that I wanted to stop adminning the CauseTube guide because I needed to free up a little bit of time because I need more time that I can edit those videos and like film and stuff. So I, have, I think I'm filming for that on Thursday this week. So anyway, it's going to be super cool and fun and just like short interviews with people. Good times. Anyway, I think that's Pretty much all I have to say. I feel like I've been talking forever. This is probably a very long segment, so I am gonna go ahead and just sew the rest of this down so that we can get to the corner and then I can show you how I did all those miters and then you can miter all the things and it'll be great. Probably most of you know how to miter, but for those of you who don't, let me show you. Okay, so I am at the point where I'm gonna do the square again and I'm gonna show you how to miter a corner and then I'm gonna do a time lapse hopefully of me making the square, I guess. So hopefully this will work out. When I say that I am using the map, or I'm, I'm just gonna say I'm using the map, the map, as a reminder, is this drawing I did, which allows me to know that like when I wanna make this turn is one, two, three, four, five, six inches from the edge. So if I measure out six inches, this is where the pin goes. And you'll see what I mean by that in just one second. Okay, hopefully this will be a good enough demo for you guys. This pin right here is at the six inch mark. And then I need to go up one, two, three, four inches from there. So all you do is take your thing and you, I put a pin in, but you can do however you want and try to make that pin as straight as possible, which is what I'm doing here. You fold it back on itself and then you take the whole thing and do the triangle bit, right? And you kind of ooch this around until the lines all line up and you have a sharp corner. 
so about there and I have lines lining up so that's great then what you want to do let me get this out of the way let's go ahead and just pin this down and there is no wrong way to pin this it's like eating a Reese's just do it however you need to do it so I like pinning with two pins like that and that's the end of that Okay, so this guy is done. Um, I had to go back and redo it because this corner was off and once this corner is off, everything's off. <laughs> I do have to say that you should note when you're doing this stuff that like it looking right is more important than it being right. Like at some point, I think this was not exactly one inch, but because it lined up properly, it matters more that it looks right than if it is actually technically right. So anyway. I just need to pin down this last part and then I'm gonna sit here and sew this and then this particular part of the trim will be done. Woo -woo. Okay, so it's all done now. God, that took a lot of hours of sewing down. Hi. My sewing room is not large enough to actually display stuff well. <laughs> so that's it. This is what the, the whole thing looks like so far. So I'm thinking I might add pleating like peeking out from underneath it like I did with Watson. So I'm gonna make a sample of that and I need to do the train tracks but we have exhausted our week <laughs> somehow I mean it did take a few days off but mm -mm -mm. why does that one look further back it's probably just because there's a desk in the way anyway so I think I'm just gonna call this vlog here because there's a lot of chats in it anyway so it's probably pretty long um and I think I have a lot more trim to add <laughs> Like, how do you guys feel about many vlogs of trim? I mean, I guess you're here to see what I'm doing at any given week, so that's what I'm doing. So I have to call it. Otherwise, this vlog will be crazy long anyway. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, if you are new here, please go down in the comments and introduce yourself. And if you're not, let me know what you're working on and all that stuff. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys next time with probably more trim. But maybe I'll make a bodice mock-up. We'll see. Probably more trim. <laughs> okay, bye guys.